So if you haven't been here the last couple of weeks, we had an incredible missions convention. And if you missed any of that, I encourage you to get onto our YouTube channel. You can do that, New Hope Urbandale, and uh, search that. If you're not part of that, sign up and be part of that, uh, that YouTube channel. Go back and watch some of those services. Incredible messages that we heard. Incredible missionaries that we got to meet. And we partner with them. And uh, it's an incredible opportunity for us to, to be part of that. We took, received a miracle offering. I haven't heard what that total is. But we're continuing to give through the month of April. So if you hadn't had a chance to give in that, you can still do so. Just mark your gift, Africa. We're, we're not uh, expecting, you know, to tell you what to give, the Holy Spirit can do that. We just ask that everybody participate in some way. So whether it's a dollar or 10 or a thousand. Listen, one person could give $10 and it's a greater sacrifice than someone giving a thousand. So it's not the amount that's important. 200,000 is just a goal. We want to be able to come alongside our missionaries and support them in their works and their endeavor. And we're, we're, we're excited to hear what God is doing across the whole continent of Africa. And we've got a tremendous group of missionaries. It's, a, it's an honor to be part of that. Uh, this morning we want to receive a dollar blessing for a family in our church. It's Ralph and Joyce Vance, whether you know them or not. We're going to do that at the end of the service. So I'm just letting you know so I don't forget. And uh, Ralph uh, had surgery about six weeks ago, and it has been a rough go of it over the last few weeks. They've made multiple trips back and forth to Mayo, been in and out of the hospital. Uh, he's there now and uh, just trying to figure out what is going on to make him well. And so uh, they've, I, to my knowledge, never been at a place like this where they've been in need, and I, it's a, just an opportunity for us to be a blessing. They're the kind of people that are always giving. And so they may not be happy with us by trying to give them uh, a blessing this way, uh, but I know that they'll forgive us. It's just an opportunity for us to come alongside them. And a dollar uh, or five or ten, whatever, from any of you, uh, all put together can be a real blessing to this family. And so uh, be praying for, for Ralph and for Joyce. Um, be praying. Our, our youth are on their way back from a retreat this weekend, so our youth pastors have been out this morning or this weekend. Pastor Weaver is uh, speaking at Scent Church, the church that we've been helping up in Cedar Falls area. He's speaking there this morning, so that's why he's not here. So when you, when you leave this morning or when you came in, you might have seen one or two pastors at the door. That's not typically our MO. We, we try to be there, and we want to meet all of you. So if you're new, we want to... I'm going to be out there, and some of the pastors will be there, but please take a moment to come by and say hi to us, introduce yourself. We're glad that you're here this morning. And uh, what do you think about that choir song, Pastor Brett? Uh, what an amazing, amazing song. I could hear that over and over and over. So it's on our YouTube channel. You can go back and, and hear that and let it be a blessing to you all over again. I want you to take your Bibles and turn to John chapter 14, and we're going to be reading also in John chapter 16. I'm excited this morning to preach the very first message in this series on the Holy Spirit. We're kicking this series off today, and this series is going to continue all the way up to our spiritual emphasis week that you heard about June 5th to the 9th. So over the, uh, the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. The reality is, is we need the Holy Spirit. We need to be full of the Holy Spirit. Now more than ever, we need the infilling of the Holy Spirit so that we can stand for truth and not compromise in our faith. We need the Holy Spirit's power in our lives. In the days that we live in today, we cannot make it on our own. I'm telling you, the world is changing. How many of you would agree with me? Things are changing. And uh, it, it my mind just goes to places of what could happen, what could be coming down uh, the road that we could be facing. And I'm saying more than ever, we need to reach out and allow the Holy Spirit to be full in our lives. We need his power. We need his presence. We need his fullness like never before. I believe that we are truly in the last of days. We read about in scripture that uh, what the times will be like when Jesus said he's going to return to rapture his church out of this world. And I really truly believe that we're in that last of days. And you might be saying, yeah, I, I agree with you. Some of you might be saying, I've heard that my whole life. So have I. And I'm not telling you that it could happen tomorrow. It could happen today. It could happen this week. 
It could happen 10 years from now. But here's the reality. We need to be ready because we don't know when that time will come. But the signs that Jesus gave us show us that we're in those days. And we need to be ready now more than ever. And we need his Holy Spirit in our life. And we need the fullness of the Holy Spirit in us so that we can take a stand. We can live right with God. We can stay right with God. We need to get serious. Today, if you don't know Jesus, I'm going to give you opportunity at the end of my message to respond. If, if he's not the Lord of your life, if, if he were to come back today, or you were to die today, would, do you know that you would be in heaven with him? You can know with confidence today and have certainty that your sins are forgiven, that you are in a right relationship with Jesus. And we're going to show you how to do that this morning. I encourage you to respond. And here's what I want to say ahead of time before we get to the end. I'm going to ask all of us today to respond. We're talking about the Holy Spirit and how we need the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit is our friend. He's our helper and we need him. And so I'm going to ask all of us as a church, individuals, to respond today in some way that we would just open our hearts wide like a funnel saying, God, pour your spirit into me. Fill me with your, with your spirit, with your presence, with your power so that you can flow through me. Help me to live an overcoming life. Help us to have families that are, that are godly families, that, that uh, we have parents that are godly parents and grandparents, that our families would be living right for God. We're in a spiritual battle that's heating up. It's getting more intense. We're under attack and we need to be ready. We need to stand firm, be strong in the Lord, his mighty power. We need to put on the full armor of God. We need to be ready for whatever the enemy brings our way. These are challenging times. But he's given us his Holy Spirit for this very purpose. He's given us tools. He's equipped us with gifts, with the fruit of his spirit, so that we can live these overcoming lives. So this morning I want to talk about the Holy Spirit, who, who he is. And so you're in John chapter 14. I want to read a few verses of scripture in 14 and John chapter 16. John 14, uh, starting with verse 15 he said, Jesus, these are Jesus' words, if you love me, keep my commands. Verse 16, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper so that he may be with you forever. The helper is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not, know, does not see him or know him, but you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. John 14 verse 25, these things I have spoken to you, is Jesus again, to you while you are remaining, while I am remaining with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and remind you of all that I said to you. Turn over to John chapter 16. We'll start reading at verse 7. Jesus says, but I tell you the truth. And I think that's interesting. Jesus saying, I'm telling you the truth, as if he told us something before that wasn't true. What is, what is Jesus saying when he says, I tell you the truth? He's saying, listen, you need to sit up and take notice here. You need to listen to this. I'm telling you the truth. It is to your advantage that I'm leaving. So at, at this point, Jesus is, is with his disciples. He's getting ready. It's like the last day before he would be uh, put on trial and crucified. So he knows this is common. There's, it's the time that... Um, they were at the, the Last Supper with Jesus. All this has happened in the same, same day, same time. And he's saying, it's to your advantage that I'm leaving. He's been telling them that he's going to go away, that he was going to be killed. It's to your advantage that I am leaving. For if I do not leave, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And he, when he comes, will convict the world regarding sin and righteousness and judgment. Regarding sin because they do not believe in me. And regarding righteousness because I'm going to the Father and you no longer are going to see me. And regarding judgment because the ruler of this world has been judged. I'm going to come back to these few verses of scripture because there's some key elements that I want to talk about there. Verse 12, I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them at the present time. I want you to notice in the last verse that we read here, all the references to he, personal pronouns, he. Here's, here's what I want to say about that. A lot of times we refer to the Holy Spirit as an it. The Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is God himself. There's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three in one, a triune trinity Godhead. And, and, and the references here, he's speaking in a 
personal pronoun of he. How many times does it say it in this one verse? But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will disclose to you what is to come. The Holy Spirit is helper. This word helper, whatever version that you're reading, it may say advocate or comforter or counselor. All three the same. The Greek word is paraclete, which means to come alongside. A paraclete is one who is called to one's aid, one who pleads another's cause or a case before a judge. So in this sense, Holy Spirit is like, is like the, the, the counselor, the advocate, the, the, the lawyer that's going to plead our case before the Father. He's our helper, the Holy Spirit. He's one who helps. It's my first point this morning. He helps us. He helps us every day. He's the one that helps you to be a, a good father or a good mother, a good, a good um, grandparent, good at whatever it is that you do for your work. He helps me. I, 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 I need him to help me to be a good pastor. When we read the Bible, he's the one who illuminates the scriptures and makes it come alive to us. The Holy Spirit helps us. He advocates for us. He intercedes for us. He intercedes through us. He's our helper. He's our comforter. Some of you may have uh, an item in your homes uh, that is called a comforter too. How many of you in your bedroom, on your bed, you've got a comforter? Now I'm not talking about a blanket or a bedspread. There's something different about a comforter, right? Okay, so I want, I want a moment of honesty and a moment of truth here. How many of you in your homes, those of you that have a comforter, your comforter is not for using? How many of you have a comforter that is only for looks? Okay, a few of you. I'm going to tell you what, what the routine is at our house. We have this brown, beautiful comforter that is on our king-size bed. And the routine is we fold it down once, fold it down twice, and lay it over the footboard. We don't use the comforter. It's big, it's beautiful, it's lush, it looks warm and comfortable. We don't use it, it's only for looks. We have other things in our house that are only for looks. You've got towels sometimes hanging in a bathroom. No, nobody should ever use those. They're just, how many would be, you're, you, you're there. You've got dishes in your cupboard that you never use. They're called china, silver. Things that are for looks, you don't really use them. I advocate, let's use all of those things. They're all good. <laughs> Husbands are saying this to their wives, like, I've been in trouble because I've said the same thing. I want you to think about this. How many, how many Christians have a comforter, meaning the Holy Spirit, that is for looks and not for use. The Holy Spirit is there, but we don't ever talk about him and we don't ever let him have a place in our life. Listen, the Holy Spirit wasn't given to us for looks, he's there for us to use. He has a purpose and he desires to be active in our lives. The Holy Spirit is our helper, he's our advocate, he's our comforter. John 16, seven, Jesus said, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I am leaving, for if I do not leave, the helper will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. Jesus is saying, it's better for you. In one version he says, it's best for you. It's to your advantage that I go away. I want you to think about all the things that Jesus did when he was here on this earth. He was always explaining the scriptures to his disciples. Jesus raised the dead, he healed the sick, he cast out demons, he performed miracles and signs and wonders. He fed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish. He was always doing amazing miracles. Jesus said, if I don't go, he, the Holy Spirit, can't come. The Holy Spirit is much better than having Jesus in the flesh. That's hard for you to understand sometimes. 
He's saying it's better for the whole, for Holy Spirit to be here than having Jesus himself. How many times have you thought it would be so much easier, it'd be so much better if he could just walk and talk with me like he did with the disciples? And he's saying, look, I've got a better plan than that. This is the best plan, the best plan. I'm gonna go back to heaven, to the right hand of the Father, and I'm gonna send the comforter, the helper, the Holy Spirit. He won't just be with you like I've been with you. He will be, he will be in you. Verse 8, he says, when he comes, he will convict the world regarding sin and righteousness and judgment. Regarding sin because they do not believe in me. And regarding righteousness because I'm going to the Father and you are no longer going to see me. And regarding judgment because the ruler of this world has been judged. He will convict the world regarding sin, righteousness, and judgment. A lot of people, when they hear that verse, they interpret it to mean when he comes... He's gonna tell us that we're a horrible person, that God's mad at us because we're not good enough, and that he's gonna get us. But listen, that's not, that's not God at all. That's the message of the enemy. That's his MO, he's the accuser. And if we allow him to, he will make us feel so unworthy of God's forgiveness, so unwelcome in his presence, and he's reminding us all the time that we've blown it. How many of you have heard that voice before? That's the voice of the enemy, but Holy Spirit is a helper. He is our helper. The first way that he helps us, he convicts us of sin and our need to believe in Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse three. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. It's Holy Spirit that leads us to salvation, that draws us into relationship with Jesus. He's our helper. The second way he helps us is he convicts us of righteousness. And you might be thinking, I know, I hear, I hear that all the time. I, I feel this need all the time to, 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 to do better, to live more righteous life. But that's not what he's saying here. The word righteousness doesn't mean right behavior. Righteousness means right standing with God. So he's convicting us, or a better word is he's convincing us that righteousness exists and it's possible for us to have right standing with God. Listen, it's because of Jesus that we're made righteous. Nothing that we can do or have ever done for ourselves, it's only because of Jesus that we're alive. It's only because of Jesus that we can be righteous. It's because of what Jesus did in taking our place that God says, look, I'm choosing to see you as Jesus. We're made righteous because of him and him alone. We cannot be good enough. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Listen, our righteousness, the Bible says, is nothing but filthy rags. We can never be good enough, but Holy Spirit helps us to be fully convinced that we have right standing with God. He convicts us of sin and righteousness. And the third thing is judgment. He convicts us of judgment. Jesus said the ruler of this world has already been judged. Who's the ruler of this world? Satan. He's our enemy. He was judged 2,000 years ago with Jesus' sacrifice and and victory uh, over death, hell, and the grave on the cross. And the Holy Spirit convinces us of this truth that Satan has been judged and he no longer has authority over us, over our lives because Jesus has already defeated him. You have authority over him. We forget that. We need to be listening to the Holy Spirit. He's he's our helper. He's our advocate. He's our comforter. He came to make us aware that we're lost and in need of Jesus and he leads us to him. He convinces us that we're in right standing with God through relationship with Jesus. And he reminds us that Satan is defeated, that he has no authority over us. So Holy Spirit is not only our helper, he's also a friend. I wonder how many of you have in your family that that one family member. I think most families have uh, one of these, like the strange aunt or the uncle or the cousin. That whenever you have a family gathering, you know that they're going to be there, you're thinking, oh no. Anybody, anybody identify with that? I think way too many Christians and way too many churches treat the Holy Spirit like the crazy step uncle. What's going to happen when Holy Spirit comes? They're good with God the Father, great with Jesus, God's Son, but not a lot of them aren't quite sure what to do with the Holy Spirit. 
Many Christians have misconceptions about the Holy Spirit. They think he's weird. But the Holy Spirit does not and will not ever make you look weird, act weird, dress weird, talk weird. He's not harsh, rude. He isn't out to embarrass you. He's your friend. Where do you think that those misconceptions about the Holy Spirit came from? Come from the enemy. Listen, he's going to do his best to lie, to deceive, and to stop the move of God's Spirit in your life and in the church and convince you that giving the Spirit control in your life is going to cause you to be weird. Listen, he saw what happened on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 and where the Holy Spirit was poured out. Incredible things happened. 3,000 people were saved in one sermon where, Paul, where Peter just got up and said, here's what's going on. And they were begging him, what are we going to do? What, tell us what to do next. And he's saying, repent. Repent and be baptized. Repent and be saved. And 3,000 people came into faith that day. He saw what happened on the day of Pentecost. And he doesn't want you to go down that road. Here's what I can tell you. The Holy Spirit is an incredible person. He's kind. He's gentle. He's compassionate. And a relationship with him will change your life. I'm telling you, my life when I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit as a teenager in high school has never, ever been the same. I'm doing what I'm doing today only because of the Holy Spirit's work in my life. I never would have chose it. It was the Holy Spirit that led me down that path, and it's been the Holy Spirit who's equipped me to do what I'm doing today. Listen, I'm not saying that I'm perfect in this. I'm not saying that I'm anybody great. I'm saying the Holy Spirit has plans will fulfill God's plans and purposes for you and he is there to help you and he's your friend. I can't fully describe to you what the Holy Spirit's influence on your life can do, but I can tell you that he's our helper, he's our friend, and he's God. He's the third person of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God Holy Spirit. And we need a renewed respect, reverence, and awe for the Holy Spirit as God. Like I said, a lot of churches don't talk about the Holy Spirit. They don't talk about his gifts. They tend to gloss over those parts of the Bible and speak about the Holy Spirit's work, uh, those parts of the Bible that speak about the Holy Spirit's work in our lives, and they say it's not not for today. I think to many of them, he's he's the crazy, crazy step uncle. But there's several verses in the Bible that mention the Trinity. The word Trinity isn't in the Bible, but there's several verses where God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all mentioned in the same verse. I just want to give you two of those this morning. One that, we, one that we already read, John 14, 16, where Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. I, listen, listen to these, these um, pronouns here. I will ask the Father. This is Jesus speaking. So there's Jesus the Father, and he will give you another helper, the Holy Spirit, so that he may be with you forever. The helper is the spirit of truth. Luke three twenty two, where Jesus was baptized in the river by John the Baptist, and this is, this is what it says, the Holy Spirit descended on him, on Jesus, in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, the voice of God, saying, you are my son, whom I love, and with you I'm well pleased. My experience with the Holy Spirit is that he, he looks for ways to help the hurting and connect them with the Father because he loves them. He died, he gave his life for us, the Holy Spirit is leading us to Jesus, always trying to help us. And we won't, when we don't listen to his voice, his still small voice, what we're in effect doing is stiff arming him. But we need to learn to listen to him because he's speaking all the time. Jeannie and I have been on a few cruises in the last few years. And one of the things that I noticed being on a cruise ship is when you're coming into a port, there's a small boat that will come up and on the side of that boat, it'll say pilot. And there's a, there a pilot, a harbor pilot on that boat, and that boat will come alongside the ship, and that pilot will get off that small boat and get onto the big cruise ship. And what his purpose to do is to come alongside or to come behind the captain and guide him through this harbor or through this port or through this canal. He doesn't steer the ship. He comes alongside the captain. Sometimes he's given suggestions, sometimes he's given orders, but all for the safe passage through a narrower, shallower waters. See, the pilot, the harbor pilot, knows that body of water better than anybody else. 
So he comes on to help the captain. It's the captain that ultimately makes the decision of whether or not he's going to heed the advice of the pilot. But here's what I can tell you. If that ship runs aground, whose fault is it? It's the captain's. He's the one responsible. And that really is a picture of the Holy Spirit. He comes alongside of us to give direction and instruction to guide you. And it's up to you, it's up to every one of us to choose to listen. Are we gonna listen to his instruction? Are we gonna listen to his voice? Are we gonna listen to what he says? You've heard that voice before, it's a gentle voice that made it sound something like this. Uh, 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 uh. You ever heard that voice before? Like you're thinking, hey, this is gonna be great, and all of a sudden you hear this voice. Uh, uh, somewhere deep inside of you, saying you should, you should not go there. There's times where we hear that voice saying, nudging us to go have a conversation with someone, or to reach out and help them and bless that person. It's the voice that tells you you need to be involved in a, in a group, in a class, to serve in a certain area. It's that voice that is nudging you to get connected. Convicting you to stop doing certain things, maybe to start doing other things. I wanna invite you to close your eyes. And I want you just for a moment to listen. Take a moment, ask the Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me right now in this moment? I believe that he's been speaking to you from the very beginning. There's some of you in the room. Uh, he's been speaking to you and he's been knocking on your heart ever so gently. So you've never invited him into your heart and life. You've never asked him to be your Lord and Savior. And today uh, he's knocking on the door. Listen, he's not going to push the door open. He's not going to slam it down. He wants you to open that door and invite him in. Maybe you've done that before, but you would say, honestly, I've not been walking in a relationship with Jesus. And today you hear that knocking on the door of your heart. Respond to him. How many of you would say today, I'm hearing that voice and I want to give my life to Jesus. I don't know for sure that if I were to die today or Jesus returned that I would go to heaven. I'm telling you today, you can be confident and convinced that what Jesus has done can happen in your life. Anybody that would hear, raise a hand, say, that's me. Today, I'm responding to that knocking in my heart. If you're watching online at home and that's you, would you just open your heart and anybody here today say, Jesus, come into my heart. Save me. Help me. Give me the assurance of the righteousness that you offer. I give my life to you. As you've given your life for me, I respond by giving my life to you. Jesus' name. Thank you for salvation, a free gift. And I receive it today in the name of Jesus. Amen. So to the rest of us, to the church, I said before, what I, my desire, this is, and I believe that it's God's desire for every one of us as a church and as individuals to open our heart wide and to believe for that in feeling the power of the Holy Spirit to come into our life. And here's the thing. If, if, a, if a father knows to give good gifts to his children, if your daughter or son were to ask you for some food, would you give them a rock? Would you give them a scorpion? Scripture says, how much more does your heavenly father want to give you the Holy Spirit? He knows that we need his presence in our life. Today, I'm asking all of us to respond. And so today, you, you would say, I need more and I want more. I don't know what that looks like necessarily, but I'm making myself available for the Holy Spirit because I know that the days that we live in, I can't stand alone. I need the help of the Holy Spirit. I need the presence of the Holy Spirit. I need a friend to come alongside of me and guide me and help me. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. So today, if you're saying, look, I don't know where you're at in, in, in your relationship with him, whether you know the Holy Spirit or not, all of us need to respond. And so I'm asking today, if you would open your heart to him, would you just stand today? No condemnation, that don't do that because somebody else is. But here's, I want our heart as, as a church for every one of us 
to say yes and open our heart to the Holy Spirit, to allow his ministry to take place in our life, to help us be all that he designed us to be. If you want to come and find a place here at the altars, set for, we're going to, we're going to take a moment just to sing this song and welcome and invite the Holy Spirit, not just for this moment, but for every day as we move forward. Holy Spirit, we open our hearts and our lives wide to you. We pray that you would pour your presence and your power, your gifts, the fruits of your spirit be evident in our life. God, that you would use us for your plan and your purpose, like that pilot that comes alongside the captain. Lord, we have control of our lives and we say, God, we give control to you. We're going to listen to you. We're going to follow your suggestions. We're going to follow your commands. We're going to follow what you say we ought to do. May our ears and our hearts be open to listen to your voice, to know and distinguish your voice among all the other voices that are around us. God, encourage us, strengthen us, empower us, help us. We need you. In these days that we live in, in the days that we face ahead, may your church, your people be equipped and empowered to face the, the, the powers of the enemy. We know that he is defeated. We know that we have a, a place in your kingdom. May your Holy Spirit convict us and convince us of those truths, of who we are because of you, of where we stand because of you. And may our lives be a, a, a funnel of a vessel for your Holy Spirit to dwell in. We are temples for your Holy Spirit. Fill us full with your presence and with your power is our prayer as a church, as individuals in this community. Have your way. Move among us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Whether, whether you came forward today or you stand in your spot there, I, my prayer, my heart, is that you would continue to open your heart to the Holy Spirit. Amen. I mean, all you have to do is say at the beginning of the day, Holy Spirit, I know you're with me. Holy Spirit, I know you got plans. Give me an ear to hear what you are saying to me. I want to be obedient because I want to end up where you want me to go. I'll listen and I'll obey. We need to be people full of the Spirit and the presence of God. If you've felt discouraged over the last few weeks or months, it just seems like there's a heavy weight. Listen, he can take that weight. He can give you peace and comfort and strength in the midst of it. It's the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that you, by your Spirit, would go with your people today and tomorrow and throughout this week. May our hearts be open wide. Fill us with your presence and your power. In Jesus' name.